Hello, everyone. This might be a bit too strong. Is that good? Okay. So, first of all, thanks for, for joining us in these uh, challenging times after lunch. I know how the food coma feels. Uh, we'll try to make it as dynamic as possible, but thanks for being here, and we let's begin. So, what we're going to be talking about is basically how to find some of the most unique... Well, we're going to show one of the different approaches that we are applying to try to find some of the most unique malware. Uh, and we refer specifically malware in operational technologies, industrial control systems, what we are calling here like the white whale of malware. To give a bit of background of uh, the speakers and who we are, it's, uh, of course, there's one person missing here, that's Rujikesh. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make, make it all the way from India, but he's going to be here, an omnipresent voice, you're going to see him in, in his large face there in the screen. In a couple of minutes, he's going to be introducing the second portion of the talk where he will talk about his appro technical approach to actually go and filter the samples. And during the first, oh yeah, <laughs> and during the first portion, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be discussing more a bit about the context. So from my perspective, I'm gonna give you a threat intelligence perspective so that we analyze why this is so relevant, why this is such a big challenge. And in the end, I mean, we don't expect you to leave this room being experts on finding this because actually very few people have found any of this but actually to have the tools that are required to begin doing that if you're interested in being the next one. So jumping into the story straight away, in uh, 2017, we received, well, our consultants uh, back, back in the company received an, uh, a call from, from a customer that was telling them that something was going on in their facility. And basically some of the processes were failing, the plant was getting flooded, so they went to, to respond. And what happened in the end was, was very, I mean, exciting and unexciting, depends on how you see it. Um, what happened was this incident that's called Trident. I don't know if some people here might already be familiar with it. For those who are not, a very quick walkthrough. What was particular about this incident is that in this facility, um, the actor had not only like crossed all the corporate and, and industrial networks, but also had developed malware that specifically was developed for targeting a very specific device from Schneider Electric, the Triconix, using a proprietary uh, protocol, UDP protocol, called the uh, tri Trisation. Uh, and basically, th they had just done something extremely complex that took them around three or four years. And well, I mean, this was like, like one of the few chances when we had seen any of this malware that was not meant for going after PCs, but actually after you know, control systems and actually trying to generate a physical impact. What's very interesting here is, is that when we saw this, of course, it, it's very dangerous. You take it very seriously. We jump, we work. But at the same time, our team was very excited, right? It just, we were kind of like excited for the wrong reasons. Because on the, on, on the one hand, what happened is like, okay, we're seeing an attack that actually could blow up something, that actually can have an, an, an impact in the physical world. But at the same time, we're excited because it's, it's one of the few. We, we've seen this only counted times. So, you know, let, let's go and figure out how they did it, what they did, who is it, you know, and this, there's a ton of story in here. If you want more, just Google Triton blogs and you're going to find the ton that, that we were releasing little by little. Uh, and also just, just some background information. We actually did ask the author of this uh, meme to, to share it because they, they had some issues. So it, it was very funny, but he was very delighted that it would be shown in a conference. Um, so no, knowing that the point is th this, this, this type of malware, the, what we saw that day and what, the reason why we're so excited is because this is so unique. And if you realize the, the timeline that you have here is, is probably the, the few times that we have seen any type of malware with this type of capabilities. Uh, at least, you know, maybe there are others that have never been disclosed or whatnot, but these are probably, I might be missing one or something, but there's not really much more than this. Uh, most people here in the room might be familiar already with Stuxnet. Stuxnet, uh, Iranian centrifuges, it goes after some Siemens devices, finds a specific device, then goes, compromises, you know, like b basically fairly complicated. Nation state versus nation state, and there is a physical impact, right? The next three cases, well, the next two cases, the, the, the one from uh, Indestroyer Havix, they were more, well, one was espionage, the other one was energy. And again, the point was trying to either gather information or generate a, a physical impact. Basically, they generated a couple of blackouts for, for a couple hours in Ukraine. Well, I mean, one of them. Uh, the fourth one, it's a POC. It's not even, it's not even an attack. It never 
so light. We just published a blog on that, and it was uh, something that we found actually hunting and searching just, just for random things. And it was also something similar. I, I believe it was also Siemens, but anyway, um, it was searching again for a specific industrial type of, uh, of, of, of equipment, and it was just gonna basically take a portion of the traffic and then make the actor, uh, enable the actor to replay it. And then the last one was Trident, what I mentioned right now. What do we see in common in all of this malware? And this is, this is very important because that's why the second portion of the, of the talk has, has any relevance. That all of this, for all of these cases, first of all, I mean, well, except from one, they are often found after the attack has already happened and there is already a physical danger. Uh, and another thing in common is that in all of them, when you start actually taking a look at the samples, there are, there are specific keywords that we might often miss uh, that are basically just related with different type of industrial or OT type of, uh, of equipment, right? Like, like if you see some specific OT protocols, it, it uses a specific type of equipment. All of them had, I don't know, Schneider or Siemens. Uh, they had probably like some functions that are embedded for, for this type of devices, right? So anyway, taking that into consideration, we have been taking this, um, let's say this task of, of trying to find what it is. But, uh, you know, why is it that we're not finding anything, right? Because we are definitely searching for it. Uh, we know what it looks like, sort of. I mean, we, well, sort of, because there are many different vendors. Or, um, but yeah, there are a couple of reasons, right? The way it's not that simple. Uh, one of them is basically that the tools cannot not, not handle it. This is something that you're not going to find with a normal antivirus, that you're not going to find in a malware analysis uh, sandbox or whatever. Like if you drop this on any known platform, it, it's not like it's going to tell you like, hey, something terrible is happening. And fairly often legitimate files, actually you look at them and they're already malicious detections and it can be entirely good. It just like was written by someone and the, the sandbox cannot just reproduce it because it's fairly specific for a fairly specific process. Um, another opportunity, uh, another option, sorry, might be low visibility into OT systems. It's not as easy to look at the, the traffic and everything is going, that, that is going in there. There are definitely companies that do that, but it's, it's fairly different than when you go and just look at all the, all, all the IT portion. And the other options might be just that there's basically nothing or, you know, it hasn't been documented because it's fairly complex and you need someone that has the resources, the motivation, knows what they are doing and that really wants to do it. So there might be actually few motivated actors. It has to be, it has to be a government, probably, or it has to be a, a group that has you know, enough knowledge or a person that really invests a ton of time and don't have anything to do, but are super clever. So anyway, at least that's how we've been seeing right now. There's, it, it has been getting a bit more simple, but you know, we, we won't get into that right now. So let's begin the search because what we, we're, we, we came here to do is, is to start thinking about how, how we're gonna search about that. And like I said, there are different approaches. But the first thing to start searching for this and how we, we would suggest it is you, you, you need to know what you're looking at and, and, and basically go and find some binaries, right? So to start filtering samples, what, what, what we try to do is first of all, like define what would be an OT binary or sample for us, right? And for that, there, this is a concept that, that the, in, in, in Mandiant we've been, we've been trying to push from, from our OT side and it's the idea of intermediary systems. That is just the idea of like, if you're in IT security, you, you love computers. If you're in OT security, you love controllers. But what happens is that actually both work together. And then in the middle, you're gonna have specific software that is gonna be used to interact with your PLC, to collect information from your sensors and then display it so that someone can use it. Basically, that type of software that you have in the middle is, is what we call intermediary systems and is what we're trying to look at, look for in, in, in different platforms. But even when you find this, the sample, there are different things that you have to consider. Um, first, first of all, like, and this is something we started precisely with, with Rushikesh uh, realizing, uh, he's, he's a, an amazing researcher. And when he started looking into this, one of the, the, the first realization was like, okay, I have all these samples, but let, let, let's see, what, what are we gonna do with this? Okay, Daniel, this is something malicious. Okay, well, uh, and, and why? What, what is it actually doing? Uh, Differently from other types of samples, the first thing that we consider is what, is what is it actually meant to do? Like what type of equipment does it interact with? Uh, what is the purpose in the process? Uh, what type of physical impact can it, can it actually generate? Or, or Because basically you're talking about a system of systems and, and oftentimes you, have the, you even use like uh, different segments or, or of code that are going to be used for one single purpose. So the, the first thing you, have, you need to know is what it is actually meant to do. 
and figuring that out is already a challenge. The second one is going to be the malicious behavior. Because, yeah, oftentimes you can find, like, you know, it, was, it had some detections, but, but maybe, you know, it had a, a, there was a P infector, and then you're going to see some very simple malware that oftentimes exists in industrial environments without, you know, sometimes they say, we're not even going to do anything about it because it's running, and if it's running, you know, I just prefer to leave my environment running than, than actually going and fixing it. Or sometimes it might generate some delays and whatever, but, you know, the point is you need to know the functionality and you need to know what actually is making that uh, malicious. And so for that, um, yeah, what we need is the legitimate binaries. But then, again, we run into more challenges because getting the binaries by themselves is, is, is already a, a challenge, right? Um, if you have, like, your Windows PC in here and just try to look at all the processes that are running in the background, likely they're going to be very similar to any of the other computers here. But if you're trying to look at what hundreds of different uh, OT ICS vendors are doing, what are their proprietary protocols, what are the, you know, all the specific things that they're that they are using, it becomes a bit trickier. So there's almost no documentation. And if, if there is, it's because probably you're a user and you already bought it from the vendor and whatnot. Um, well, we also closed source development. This is something that is not meant to just, you know, you don't go and find it on GitHub, you can't interact with it. it it's supposed to be more like for you as a user and sometimes you can modify it so you can do a specific physical process. Uh, specific proprietary distributed parts. It basically it just it's just too much. It's combined all over the place, and well, we just realized that it was it was kind of challenging, right? So, but still, we want to find them, and that's basically what where Rujika is going to show one of the, of the approaches we use. So, I mean, regardless of whether it's challenging or not, we need to figure out how. So, where are we going to look into it? We we are proposing, or I'm like. There are four main sources. The main source is in-house collection, of course. If, you, if in your company, your organization, you run industrial control systems, OT, or happen to have any visibility, you might be able to collect. Just be very careful how you do it, of course. You should not be active in that, but you know that might be one, one, one way to obtain it. Another option is directly from the manufacturers, like if there's any, any interaction, for example, if you can get it directly from them. Right now, it's, it's not so easy because you don't want to they didn't want to go and just give it to anyone. And there's a reason why it, it has been kind of like separated and secret historically. But I mean, that's an option. Uh, another option might be, we mentioned here discussion forums, but it's just like, uh, like, like, like a lot of the software that you use for these cases, oftentimes it's even like open source. Like, yeah, you can actually go and find some of those, those scripts like, or I, I don't know, like some, some, basically, yeah, there's a lot of open source or you go to the forums specifically from the engineers and they're, sometimes even talking more than they should about like well, what's going on, right? And then finally, malware analysis platforms. That's probably like, like the main one that we use because they have like a bit of everything, right? It's, uh, it's kind of like, like the dream for, for, for threat intelligence and for threat hunting in general. Uh, so if you go and look, I don't know, to virus total, police farm, you name it. And yeah, well, they're, they're, that's where you, you can start taking a look. But just to let you know, it, it's never gonna tell you what there is. And you have to figure out how to actually start filtering them. And that's where the, where the trick begins. Uh, in this sense, the only thing that I would highlight for, for malware analysis platforms is there, there's a new company that actually I personally find very interesting. It's called Adolus. And what they're trying to do is kind of like something similar, I mean, like a repository, but, but specifically for valid firmware from industrial organizations. I foresee that in the future, if any one of you is super curious, that might be a, a very good repository to look for it. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's all the background really that, that we need to, to get into the, the actual approaches. Uh, just the last thing is from, from our team in general, like in threat intelligence, uh, at least from our side, we, the, the main things I would say, like the, the easiest approaches that you can do is for, of course, Yara rules, uh, Snort rules, and uh, what Roshik is going to show us in a couple of minutes. And actually, as I speak, actually, I believe yesterday we had a, another speaker talking about our approach from Yara Rules. So if, if you're interested, I encourage you to search for CDS uh, conference and Kenneth Proska, and you will see a total different approach that he suggested a couple days ago. With that being said, I am going to send this to Rushikesh. Uh, so what exactly the test of deduction uh, mean here? As Daniel had already explained, uh, we, we tried to uh, we tried to basically filter out uh, interesting samples from uh, from various sources. So initially, uh, 
uh, the the I, i'll just tell you some basic story before going ahead as daniel already mentioned we've been discussing about you know uh, hunting some interesting malicious samples and but, but then how was the bigger question we tried answer so initially we started like you know downloading some malware samples doing some analysis in the sandboxes and then uh, you know reading through the reports but then we found the the approaches lacking from industrial control systems point of view from cyber physical systems point of view reason being many a times what uh, uh, an a, a cyber physical systems binary uh, is supposed to do is considered as a malicious behavior by uh, by uh, a sandbox and uh, likewise there were many problems as well so the first question we tried answer was like how to how to basically define in a specific executable or a binary or a dll as cyber physical relevant dll or binary and there is where we kind of you know uh, we we kind of uh, tried pull some uh, tests which can actually help in sorting such uh, binaries or rather you know sorting them from the rest of the binary variants we can say so uh, these are some of the uh, tests as you can see on the screen we would be discussing about that is status strings strings in memory error rules functions of interest api sequence device and network device probes and import hashes some of them we will be uh, actually looking into demo demonstrations as well so let's go to next slide status strings uh, very basic approach most of the most of the analysts or malware researchers they they try run strings command on uh, onto the binary they are trying analyze just to see like what exactly it is holding uh, inside so we also did that particular command on some of the binaries and uh, a small demo for static strings we can see here uh daniel can you go to next slide please yeah sorry so we just ran strings command on a binary and we could see like you know there are there are plethora of strings which are basically populating all the all the screens so we just grabbed some interesting keywords and we could see there are some entries around six entries here Uh, which are relevant to us which says plc station number and then something some value received from plc and what not so that gives us some idea about yes this binary is actually containing some information which is relevant to cyber physical systems but uh, then still uh, we cannot blindly rely on this because this is just a string command so some some mischievous uh, actor can actually be you know embedding such text into the binary for somebody to mislead or or to basically researchers to mislead and there is where we uh, kind of you know try drilling this whole uh, strings into little more uh, depths and this time we we use some uh, some some kind of instrumentation enabled tool uh we call it uh, floss uh, that is an open source tool released by uh, fireye quite a time back so we will see the demo for that uh, daniel can you please move to a couple of slides ahead yeah so here we can see the demo of uh, uh, strings or rather dynamic strings onto the same binary again plethora of strings just kind of you know jamming everything on to screen so here we can see uh, there are quite a good number of entries visible and uh, we can see there are some entries which are actually being fetched from memory so that's the benefit of using floss we found like you know dynamic strings so this was actually second test of deduction uh, we tried perform yeah 
uh, before going ahead into this concept i i think we should we should discuss this concept in a bit like you know functions of interest what exactly does this mean uh, we ran static strings we ran dynamic strings we found some interesting keywords but then still uh, whatever we were trying to uh, uh, you know convince to the world okay this is cyber physical relevant binary is not full proof reason being as i've already told uh, an interesting actor can actually you know uh, keep on stuffing such keywords here and there and accordingly uh, the binary would be flagged as cyber physical relevant binary which actually is not a truth so what could be another uh, concrete test of deduction was our was our uh, next question we tried answer and the the thing was uh, functions so here what we tried to do is uh, we uh, so basically i interacted with uh, many endpoint uh, uh, researchers to understand like how they visualize binary it was not one it was actually at least a couple of dozens of researchers just to understand more about how they visualize binaries or you know how they visualize behaviors and what not and i realized there is something really very interesting which can actually be leveraged to sort uh, industrial control systems relevant binaries and that is the behavior uh, where these binaries have been programmed by design have been programmed to speak to some of the devices so for most of the operating systems uh, which are in practice today every such uh, uh, device is recognized by the file as a file right so then i tried sort that particular uh, type of call to that file which can give us more uh, concrete information and i found the easiest way is is a function or in a, an api call which says open file uh, and that way we tried dig deeper and and try to see like what exactly open file can lead us to and here's the next demo for open file or functions of interest there's going to be two demos one would be on radare another would be using gitra so here i'm i just am trying run some binary with radare then doing some analysis with using some typical flags available uh let's not discuss more of radares functionality here because that's awesome and huge tool um just to keep uh, our our discussion succinct to our topic i love avoid that as of now so uh, i have ran i i command basically to see whatever it it spells out in in form of functions or some resolve functions or whatever it is uh again it was plethora of information for me so next step was basically to drill it down and that i have used uh, okay okay we won't be drilling it down here it's it's into the another demo so it's basically i'm trying find uh, those function calls or api calls where open file as a keyword is available and i found two interesting uh, such entries so i just i just kind of you know pasted one of the address with command ext and now i would actually be reaching to the address 0x41da71 to see what exactly is lying there and now pds will give us something so there are many entries in raid out of that i would
Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, my apologies. It was power outage here. It's it's actually a rainy season in India, and sometimes power outage happens. My apologies for the disconnection. Uh, Daniel, can we replay the, the video from where it was disconnected, please? Yep. This is the next one. Okay. Uh, the the open file one. Yep. Okay. No, no, not this one. I, mm. I wanted the previous one. You were still on that? Yeah. You can forward the video to, to maybe like last 10 seconds or something. We just want to share the inference we we found from that particular. Yeah, I can't advance them. So. Yeah. It will get there. Yeah, it's almost there. Yes, so we are seeking that particular location and yes, here it is. So so the thing which says, you know, error accessing coil register address field file something, something, something gives us a concrete proof that we are actually dealing with a cyber physical relevant binary. Uh, reason being coils are used in uh, so in, in majority of Modbus uh, implementations, and 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 that is how uh, we can deduce that we are actually dealing with uh, uh, some cyber physical relevant binary. And let's go to next demo. So here we would be using uh, um, an, an awesome openly available reverse engineering tool called Gidra. So I just am setting up a project here. Yeah. And now let's copy the binary to, to the project. This demo would actually cover the way I tried finding relevance uh, for cyber physical binaries. So there could be some scenarios where things actually did not return any result. So now we will run the analysis through binary. It usually takes some time depending upon the computing capabilities of hardware we have. But, but the interesting point we can uh, start focusing on is on to the left upper left hand panel uh, of, uh, of the user interface where we could see a symbol tree. And then there are some entries saying, you know, imports, exports, functions, labels, classes, namespaces. Uh, interestingly, uh, in, 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 in some of the relevance finding exercises, we were able to find uh, good entries in uh, imports. And in this particular present binary that we are trying to analyze, we were able to find something in the entries of functions. So let's wait for some time until the analysis is complete. It usually happens 
in in a minute or something hopefully same will be here yeah uh there's another thing we can actually uh, focus as well and that is on to the lower left panel lower left panel uh, which says data types okay analysis is complete and now let's see earlier what i used to do is uh, i used to manually browse through all the functions but then uh, eventually i was as i was not aware of this particular filter text field uh, so it used to take a lot of time but now that filter text field is of use to us okay uh, before going further yeah so it says ip start address and and something something which gives us an idea okay there is some need to work device where where there is going to be a, a lp start address where there's going to be some address but again that is vague claim nobody is going to buy that unless we show them the real uh, function if available okay so we are trying search some keywords into the symbol tree uh but and no avail let's see if something interesting pops up still nothing now we'll try search similar keywords into uh into the uh, data types uh, as well to see if something works yeah so this was but the name of plc uh, i mean name of the binary so nothing that can actually prove our claim yeah so this gives us some information but again nothing concrete so maybe some other way we could use and yeah now it says define if type plc so that gives us a concrete information about a data type used and which actually is defining some some property which is really relevant to program logic controllers uh but to drill it deeper again we would be resorting to strings in a different way uh not like the one we have seen previously so here we have tried extracting all the strings using gidraj uh, search capability and then we tried search for a keyword called plc now here we could see the plc station number and something something in the label uh and clicking on to that particular ad address took us to directly the function or uh, we can say a source representation of that keyword into the uh, into the binary now that gives us fair enough idea that the binary we are trying to deal with is actually cyber physical relevant binary because uh, because of the the representation we could see on to on to screen uh, in the in the user interface so that is that is most of it into the second demo so far yeah so i just tried highlight the plc station number and uh, i mean as as a as an entry into this particular binary again more strings okay and this time we are trying search something for modbus and let's see if something works out so these entries so far are technically string entries but are kind of you know present deeper into the source uh, which can actually help us make our case stronger when we are when we are commenting that this particular binary is cyber physical relevant binary so in the location column when we click on to that particular address and when we close this particular uh, string search utility gidra takes us directly to that particular entry into uh, uh, into this assembled source so that is how we get fair enough idea okay uh, any can you please yep yeah uh, so we could see uh, okay no problem probably you exited the demo no problem so in the, the the previous demo we wanted pause actually if if possible the gidra demo 
So I'm not sure what happened in that one. Ah. Yes. Okay. I don't think I can advance it. I don't know why. We can. We can. Okay. No problem. So there we could actually see some string called etsserial, which was actually are uh, actually you know giving us fair enough idea about uh, some conversion that's happening from uh, that's happening about a traffic which is maybe coming from serial going to uh, Ethernet or maybe coming from Ethernet going to serial or something like that. So that gives us an idea about the device probe and that to specifically network device probe, uh, which is which is potentially lying around in that particular binary. Uh, Daniel, that's just fine. We can skip this demo. Okay. Uh, I mean, we can skip the repetition per se. Yeah. Uh, another important concept was fuzzy hash or import hash. Uh, reason being the normal hashes, yes. just by changing a bit and we could see a complete new hash in the wild. So that is kind of a challenge we tried to solve. And the answer was uh, selectively hashing the binary for some maybe repetitively used code. And uh, as, as, uh, as no uh, developer is uh, uh, you know, immune to use of code, Majority of uh, majority of such uh, development, closed source development, we have witnessed like you know they use some kind of open source components or certain things which have been repetitively used. Uh, having said that, uh, we tried uh, kind of you know running fuzzy hash or import hash on selective part of uh, binary and to see if any such hash could be you know matched into into other uh, other uh, hunted binaries uh, there won't be demo of this because that's kind of tricky to do right now uh, in the smaller window of time but that was actually a thought behind you know in uh, uh, you know inducting this particular approach here in the in the presentation uh, next slide please API sequences. So um, this was something. This actually is a thing which actually came from from seasoned uh, malware researchers who had been, you know, analyzing malware samples for decades. Uh, they are so trained to look into into binary for specific API call sequences that they can easily figure out. Okay, this is maybe Triton. This is maybe Stuxnet or whatever. So uh, we tried to use similar approach to kind of you know induct in our uh, research as well. Uh, results so far are uh, kind of not in the state of uh, production. Honestly, uh, we still are testing this particular approach, but this approach is really awesome. Like in uh, here, in example, we mentioned reading coil. So like you know to read particular coil, there would be some concrete set of uh, API calls has to be done. And, and and if we just kind of study some similar behaviors for other cyber physical systems, then we can actually uh, establish a concrete deduction mechanism for, for, for the given behavior across uh, a multitude of binaries. So that was an idea here. Uh, next slide, please. Device probes, as we have already seen in previous uh, demo, there was there was uh, there was ETH to serial was being called. Uh, similar scenarios can be found. Again, there was a device probe in the PLC uh, relevant demo as well, where with the radar we tried to actually locate that particular function where it was trying reach to a particular coil, but as the coil was not present into the local uh, network. The, the the failure the function failure actually was highlighted and that's how we realized uh, I mean we uh, deduced that yes there are some devices being probed um, next slide please. yeah so the demo here we would be uh, so this demo uh, to tell you okay we are doing modbus only so yeah I I'll, I'll give you more details. So it is actually repetition demo from the previous slide itself. Uh, 
then if possible we can fast forward it to the end where we can actually show the coil outcome directly I don't think I can advance that, unfortunately. Okay, no problem. So again, we are trying to probe those open file functions uh, or open file uh, API calls to understand what exactly is happening, uh, or, or rather, where all all this particular binary is trying to probe. Yes, and now we can see like error accessing coil register address field file something something. So which gives us fair enough idea that okay, there is some device being probed. It could be a network device. It could be you know uh, maybe a locally available device which is actually being communicated over serial uh, bus or something like that. So that was a motive. There would be a couple of more demos. Mm, no, this is actually repetition. Okay, then I think yeah. I can do this. Yeah. Uh, so yes, network device probes. So there are multiple ways we can actually detect if the particular uh, binary is trying to reach a particular network device. That's either through traffic analysis or through tracing the OT protocols or through actually you know. uh doing again the analysis on binary so uh, for for traffic analysis simple thing is you know trigger the binary in in your sandbox and monitor the traffic we definitely would see some some interesting uh, uh we can say probing or querying on to local uh, network and then uh, as i mentioned about ot protocols there would be some you know uh interesting ot relevant protocols which can be actually visible in most of the most of the um packet analysis but apart from that let's go to the binary and see some demo on binary directly so this demo was prepared uh quite recently it uh, this binary actually is having multitudes of functionality actually addressing multitudes of uh, we can say protocol so here we were actually able to see some relevant functions specific to IEC 1001 IEC 102 IEC 103 IEC 104 IEC 61850 uh then spabus then cybus so uh but then the common interesting thing among these all strings uh that i have just uttered what uh they all have uh you know substation related functionality in common so which was kind of a, a unique uh, uh, we can say deduction we were able to make out of it okay so analysis is complete and again we would be going by the lazy approach using the filter uh, for for finding if something interesting is there okay yeah so here we can see uh, some function which actually is an external function uh, iec101 underscore m probably means master reason being there is another entry for iec101 underscore s probably means slave 
so that gives us like one concrete proof of this binary being cyber physical relevant binary because there is some master slave related uh communication uh, embedded into this particular uh function or, or in, in into this particular binary that is one deduction we could find okay another was iec 61850 another interesting substation control protocol or standard we can say that too we could see here again that is external function call so it's actually uh, uh, we can say an external dll being called where these all functions uh, were triggered but nevertheless that gives us okay 61850 goose goose is again another interesting implementation of substations uh, now we could see you know goose send and goose receive that gives us you know concrete proof that this particular binary is cyber physical relevant binary again spabus underscore and probably spabus protocols master implementation it seems so that's one demo there should be one more yes so this is second demo where now we are using radare tool to kind of uh, uh, understand if the evidences we were able to gather in gitra are are the real one or is something missing or is something false positive this is just to validate the 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 findings again uh, actually not required but then it's always good to have couple of evidences in place going further so here i did the same thing i just tried search all functions and i grabbed those all function list with iec as a keyword and i could see a lot of iec relevant entries here so iec 104 source uh, sorry slave iec 104 master similar to 61850 61850 goose and and so on and so forth yeah the the instance of spabus is also here and that's actually a function call that gives us fair enough set of proofs to consider this particular binary is actually a cyber physical relevant binary here now we will i'll be showing you some uh, some entries which are which actually is a combination of the grep uh, outcomes we have seen in past here we can see you know a lot of interesting entries uh, uh, mentioning you know ic61850 cybers pabers then goose then tcp cybers then there is serial cybers should also be there modbus serial is there modbus tcp is there and for every of such uh, uh, mentions there is either m or s appended which says either master or slave functionality being considered so this is like you know concrete proof that we were able to gather from this whole analysis that okay the binary that we are uh considering for analysis or further analysis is actually cyber physical relevant binary um next slide please uh it is the same demo we can probably it was re restarted yes yara rules um honestly uh, my colleague was actually able to find or rather is actually able to find lot of interesting samples using yara rules but i was having no luck with yara rules most of the time reason being i was getting lot of data for sure lot of uh, binaries the problem was those binaries uh, were there but there was lot of noise as well and sorting that noise in itself was quite a competitive challenge the reason being i uh, per day i used to download at least 100000 binaries and then used to sort them 
even automatically uh, even if i uh, happen to you know sort them automatically it used to take at least 5 hours for me so that was kind of challenge for me uh, my colleague kenneth praska have solved that challenge um, but somehow i could not get a good lead in that so far uh, but yes uh, for me what i could visualize out of yara rules is that's kind of limited approach at least for oh, my mindset so far and uh, unless it is really fine tuned unless we kind of you know uh, uh, try to search for actual memory artifacts using yara rules uh, this approach is quite a challenging one to get uh, uh, less noisy feeds so that was kind of a limitation but nevertheless it's actually really good place to begin with uh, into ot relevant um, malware hunting uh next slide please results uh i think daniel can actually uh, you know speak more on results i'll just begin uh so okay so this whole uh, we can say excursion on you know sorting the binaries for uh, ot relevance uh gave gave us kind of kind of you know really trim down set of files to further analyze so earlier it used to be like you know we used to using simple yara rules i used to get some file then i used to analyze that and then after the report was prepared i used to realize okay this binary has some keywords which are specific to ot but uh there is no functionality which is actually relevant to cyber physical systems or operational technology so using this particular set of tests of deduction we were able to kind of you know remove that operational overhead uh we did try automating some of these tests and uh, that actually helped us you know expediting analysis as well and as i have said already like you know it helped us reducing the clutter and gave us gave us like you know fair enough uh, uh informed decisive capability to uh, set a benchmark or at least a partial benchmark to sort of operational technology relevant or cyber physical systems relevant binaries next slide please yeah i think we are reaching to end of uh, presentation so these are some of the sources i have used uh, all of them are openly available so please feel free to uh, go through them if if there is there, if if there are any questions uh, we would be more than happy to answer and if if the time doesn't permit us answering right now uh, definitely we both are reachable offline online we can all we can always be there to help you yeah thanks and and just to echo on what rishika said in the end i I'm, i'm really sorry really apologize that i did not bring any responses like what we give you just some examples and foundations how we're going about it but what we we really want to everyone from here to get is more like there is a challenge an open challenge to try to work in this type of area we provide some examples of one approach that we are using that's why we highlighted the yara one for example that we have there might be many different approaches if you have ideas we'd love to see you maybe in the next conference or reach out to us and we would love to work a bit more in that uh because in the end the challenge for for finding this type of malware is you know it's it has a very high impact it's very difficult to find it but if you find it i'm i'm pretty sure everyone's going to love you um the only thing in here is that there are two two different approaches you can do it a, a lot of that you can do it manually but the challenge is is mainly like what the type of work that rishikesh is doing to try to make it in in more automated way it's more more clever ways so that you can filter among all the clutter because if you normally have this amount of noise for ot we have twice as much because only a couple are going to be what matter but uh yeah thanks for everything this is all and we jump if you have any questions i don't know I think we have like a couple minutes so if you have any questions feel free to drop. Well, okay. if if none don't worry uh let us know if you yep.
have anything, uh, there's there are our emails. Feel free to reach out, and thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.